and there's the corona, and there's a brilliant prominence to the side of the sun. This is incredible, the best corona I think I've ever seen in my life. It really is incredible. Now, around there, you can't see the outer corona at the moment, but you can see the inner corona beautifully. The moon in the middle there, and a curious ashen light all the way around. And this is quite amazing. There aren't any stars visible at the moment. We thought we might see some, but in fact, we don't seem to be able to get those. So you can't see any of the stars. There are two prominences, a magnificent one over to the right-hand side of the sun. We rather expected that, because we knew that there was a big sunspot around. This corona is quite the best I have seen. That prominence may, I think, be as good as the famous looped prominence that we was seen on the eclipse of 1918, so long ago. The sky is a curious, dark, mauvey colour. I suppose there was a certain amount of haze up there. There's a strange, eerie quality about the light. And of course, here on the Monte Umbi, everybody is working absolutely flat out because this six minutes is going to seem to flash by. And now I can see at the top of the sun another prominence. It's difficult to tell exactly what kind the corona is because there is a certain amount of cloud up there. But you can see that it's more or less symmetrical around the sun, so it's intermediate between what we call solar maximum and solar minimum types, which is really rather interesting. Those prominences are quite staggering, I may say. Now, we're almost approaching now the very middle of this eclipse. And, of course, because this is a long eclipse, we're going to get the maximum darkness. Round the sun now, I can just start to see the outer corona, which I didn't think we were going to see at all, frankly. Because we're now, since we're almost in the middle of the, since we're almost in the middle of totality, the sky is as dark as it's going to get. This strange, eerie quality. Everything seems as if it's stopping. All nature seems to stop. There's hardly a breath of wind now. At least I can't feel any. Now, the corona seems to be brightening. And those prominences, I can now see three prominences and a coronal plume. It's difficult to tell just how far the corona extends. I can see a faint sheen round the sun. And now I can actually see one or two of the brighter stars. That prominence over to the left-hand side of the sun, I can now see it in the form of an arch. And this we did expect because there's a big sunspot group there and we rather hoped that something of the kind would in fact turn up. And I'm delighted to say that it has. Now we can see the diamond ring will be appearing in a minute. We've got all, but there's the diamond ring. And the diamond ring has appeared. An incredible sight. There it is, the ring has appeared. The corona's vanished. And that is the end of this eclipse of the century. And by Jove, was it worth seeing? Well, that was a breathtaking sight. I've seen three total eclipses before, but nothing to compare with this one. Conditions weren't absolutely ideal because there was a certain amount of haze around, but nothing to spoil the beauty of the scene. Uh, the inner corona was magnificent. We couldn't see the outer parts, but in a way that enhanced the beauty of the brilliant inner corona. And there were some magnificent red prominences of a kind that I've never seen before. The sky turned a curious dark mauvey blue, and there was an eerie quality about the light altogether. We couldn't actually see the stars, but there were two bright planets on view, Venus and Saturn. And when the end of the eclipse came, the diamond ring effect was absolutely superb. And then there was just a sliver of the sun appeared once more from behind the moon, and in a twinkling of an eye, the eclipse was over, and the light came back, and the shadow rushed away over the sea.